Hey folks, Matt Kuda here, and today we are going to discuss what I'm not allowed to discuss. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about the latest project that I'm working on, and this is a body of work that will involve um, photographing specific species in a particular area. I'm, I can't discuss specifics about the area that I'm going to be targeting, but you know what I can say is that it will be an exhaustive uh, amount of photographs for this particular area and uh, it's an area that probably will not get a lot of press in the future but it's an area that a book is going to be written about and my images are going to be in that book so <clears throat> without further ado um, I wanted to mainly just first discuss you know why a project is important okay uh, a project if you've never done a project before I highly suggest that you go ahead and create a new project now what is a project uh, a project is a body of work um, for instance I have the hummingbird project and every year that project becomes bigger better and uh, hopefully a little more imaginative now this body of works a little bit different in the sense that it's going to go into a book so what I'm doing is I'm actually going out and I'm photographing several things right now. One is white-tailed deer. There are a lot of white-tailed deer in this area. I want to photograph the, the bucks, the does, the, uh, the uh, fawns. I want to photograph everything there. There's squirrels in this area. There's uh, groundhogs. There's uh, fish like bass and catfish. Um, there's um, even things like um, otters, um, great horned owls, and barred owls, as you'll see today. So, without further ado, what I wanted to do is get into this body of work and start talking about each of the photographs. If you're listening on the audio podcast, if you click in the show notes, there will be a, uh, a link to a page you can go and follow along with my images so let's go ahead and do that the first image is going to be a white-tailed deer now in this first image this happens to be a buck and, and a buck um, is is difficult to photograph they're often you know mysterious and back in the woods and they're hard to get uh, glass on a lot of times and so you know, I was happy to see this buck. Now, as I was walking along, um, right now I'm doing, right now as part of this project, I am mostly just doing photo walks. So I'm going through the woods. Um, later on in the year, I'll be doing more work from blinds and hides to get more elusive species. And, you know, that's kind of what you have to do. So you kind of pick off the, uh, you do your photo walks and you pick off the ones that are going to be easy to photograph or more friendly toward people and then you can go into uh, the actual uh, blind work so anyway the t the uh, the white-tailed buck okay it's it is a an el elusive animal as i just stated um, it is an animal that um, likes to eat a variety of things it eats a lot of uh, bush-like materials uh, trees smaller than tree branches, for example, smaller than say um, I don't know less than the size of a pencil in diameter, and usually newer uh, types of uh, vegetation. So not like old bark encrusted kind of things, but more like new um, new tree branches. New uh, uh, that's why they get in your garden. They like to eat the garden. Um, so. So as I was walking through the path, you know, I had my son with me and we, we, I almost missed him. He was right there and he froze just completely still. But fortunately this time of year, their coats are a very light brown tan color. And I was able to, uh, 
get this photograph of him. Uh, it is a, a high ISO shot. It's dark back in the woods. I use my Sony A9, uh, which is actually being used right now to photograph or to video this, uh, uh, this YouTube video. So the next image, uh, I like this image. It's a doe. It's a doe that um, kept watching me carefully. She would, she would kind of look back over her shoulder and then she would move a little bit farther and she'd stop and she'd, you know, she'd kind of look around and she'd smell and then she'd head back in, into the woods. Well, before she headed back into the woods, she just gave me this one last turn back to me. And I was like, okay, that's the shot right there. So. This shot kind of speaks to me a little bit. Again, a, a part, I get part of this body of work, part of this project I'm working on for this book. And um, without a doubt, the white-tailed deer will be huge in this, in this project. The third photograph uh, that I've captured so far is of a red-shouldered hawk. Uh, there's a red-shouldered hawk working the same area. He is, um, he or she here is uh, perched, of course. And what's interesting is I would actually um, kind of stand there and wait and and you could hear the hawk in the distance, you know, and pretty soon, you know, she flew over my direction, landed near me and I got this shot. Um, the red shouldered hawks are very territorial as most uh, predators are. And this one is certainly no, you know, no exception to that rule. Uh, she, she was very territorial, didn't really want me there, so I didn't spend much time there. I kept on moving, but uh, it just gives you an idea of some of the diversity here where I'm photographing. Uh, this was shot with my Sony a7R 3 with my uh, Sony 200 to 600 FE lens, and uh, of course at f6.3. Um, the next image is uh, an, again showing the diversity of this area that I'm in. I'm, I'm just excited to be in this area. I'm excited to see all of the different species here and be able to record them. And one of the most, I'd say, fairly common uh, insects in this area is the ebony jewel wing. And that is uh, a damselfly, not to be confused with a dragonfly who has a totally different kind of eye arrangement and um but this thing is just sparkling you know has that just that sparkling um green color and it just looks great let me turn down my speaker here real quick that's just annoying okay so everything's on the table here insects and and birds and deer and any kind of mammal and I want to encourage you that's what makes the, doing these projects so interesting is you can get in there and you can create a body of work that actually um, is diverse it teaches you you know how to photograph in low light conditions how to photograph large mammals how to photograph medium-sized mammals birds raptors um, you know, owls, we're going to see an owl here in a second, um, you know, spider webs and spiders and I mean, you name it, you know, it, it's, you know, so often we get, you know, pigeonholed and like, uh, I'm only a bird photographer or I'm only a backyard bird photographer or um, I only go to these specific areas. And I think a lot of times there are areas near your own home that would present an awesome uh, subject and I think you know we're, we're kind of remiss to to go to those places and actually not just document them but actually make something cool happen there you know um, it could be a place where uh, here's a perfect example it could be a place where maybe it's a park maybe it's a river park maybe it's a, uh, a local um, you know, maybe it's Central Park you know, and, and I'm going to document everything in Central Park. And I know it's been done a million times, right? But um, it's, it's an exercise um, for you. So, you know, I encourage you again to just go down this road. 
but uh, anyway, I digress. The next image is actually a very interesting image, and I've I've done a podcast episode on this. Um, I did not do a video, so we're going to talk about it here briefly. This next image is of a, of a barred owl, and I was getting ready to go home for the day. I would photographed several white-tailed deer that day, and I really um, wanted to make something happen, you know. I, I, but I, it was just kind of a blah day, right? It was just, uh, I was ready to just throw in the towel, frankly. And all of a sudden, I hear in the distance the famous, you know, who cooks for you uh, call. And everyone knows in the birding community who makes that call. And that's the barred, the barred owl. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, there's a barred owl here. And I texted my brother immediately and I said, hey Rick, I've got a barred owl. He's about a hundred yards out and I'm gonna try to track him. And so I kept working my way back to where originally I thought he would be. And I did see something originally in that, in that area, uh, just a blur of a bird originally. And I thought, well, that was an owl, but I don't know what kind of owl. And when I heard the who cooks for you call from, I knew right away, barred owl. And so I got in there, I stepped into the darkness and this is kind of a dark, just to set the backdrop. This is a dark area on the trail where it has that, just that, that typical canopy, uh, the, the heavy summer foliage on top. You know, on the bottom, you've got a layer of high uh, brushy weeds and so forth. And then you've got hardwood trees coming up uh, all in through there and a perfect spot for a barred, uh, a barred owl. I just, uh, uh, you know, I continued on and continued to move down the trail and I stopped and I said, you know what, I'm gonna make one call. I'm just gonna make one call and see what happens. So I fired up the barred owl call and sure enough, I get a response. And I'm like, okay. So I waited and I said, okay, I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna hit the barred owl call. I hit the, cow, I hit the, uh, the uh, call and then boom, down drops this owl flying right at me because he thinks I'm what, another owl, right? Because I just called. So he's he comes literally, I mean, 10, it must have been like 10 feet from me. He swoops straight up in the air and lands on a, on a, on a branch. Well, I'm thinking, okay, fine, that's cool. It's a great, you know, interaction with, with nature. But I was like, you know, he's not going to stay there, right? So I whip out my A9. My A9 is hanging right there on my, on my chest, but it's not, it's in its harness. So I, I, he's so high up, he's angled up. And so I'm going to have to, you know, I'm unscrewing my harness real quick. I wish that I should have, a, I should have a quick release, but you know, I undo the harness real quick and, and, um, um, just uh, tilt that up, that camera up, and I'm holding on to that thing, and I'm just hammered down. I'm just hammered down on the A9, 20 frames a second, and I'm like, I can't believe that this guy's just sitting right here. He's not doing a thing, and so you know, I'm taking, I'm turning vertical, and I'm doing horizontal, and I'm, I mean, I'm just anything I can think of, I'm hitting it, and. Um, I'm just sitting there looking at him. He's looking at me and, and nobody, you know, nobody's moving. No, nobody's unhappy. He's just chilling out, sitting there. I photographed him for another 20 minutes and then he's just gone. No, he doesn't go. I go. That's the funny thing about it. He stayed right there. I finally just said, you know what, buddy, you've given me everything I could ever ask for. You have a good day. And I just turned around and I walked away. And as I looked back one, la one last time behind my shoulder, I saw him still sitting there in that same spot and he was just happy. Now, the story goes on from there. As the days went on, um, I, I saw less and less of him. What I realized was 
that the red-shouldered hawks I was just telling you about were dominating this area. And if they heard, uh, if they heard a who cooks for you, they were all over it. And I saw them tear off down in there where the owl would be, and they were just heavily territorial in this area. Now, the thing I didn't understand though. Um, I finally found the red-shouldered hawk's nest, and it was probably within, oh man, maybe 50, 60 yards of where I was at. Uh, I had no idea it was there. And so you can see why they were being so territorial. But anyway, um, a great opportunity. Again, you just never know what you're going to see. You know, you you get in, I think we get in our mind this idea that, you know, I'm going to go out there. And I'm going to photograph X today, right? I'm going to go out, I'm going to photograph deer. I'm going to photograph elk. But then all of a sudden, you know, something just happens. I'm going to set that down before it falls off. All of a sudden, you know, something just happens, right? It just happens right there before your eyes. And you're like, oh my goodness, you know, how in the world did, did that bird just appear? How in the world did uh did that happen when i wasn't expecting it it's, it's one of those things that just blows your mind and so i hope to give further updates on this uh as i go forward don't like i said eventually i'll reveal uh exactly um you know what the story is and and you know what book it's going to be and, and when it will be available and all of that. But for now, um, just realize that um, I can't really talk about it at this point. It's kind of a, it, it's, it's not really an NDA. It's not a, it's not that I am bound by law to not talk about it. The biggest reason I don't want to talk about it is because I don't want people you know, flocking to this particular area, and I don't want people um, possibly ruining the shots that I that I need to get right um, for this whole thing. So um, that's really the end of it. I mean, it's it's not like I'm doing a, a shoot for National Geographic or anything, right? It's just it's more of a respect thing. It's more of a um, just keeping it simple and and so forth. So I'll eventually reveal. Um, the whole story um, and you'll see it unfold here over the next uh, several months and it's probably going to be at least a year long project and i'm going uh, i'm probably averaging right now about about two to three times a week over there in this location so anyway the other thing that i had to talk about was the sony 1.4 x teleconverter just a little um a little tease there I'm, I'm testing that right now i'm going to be doing a review on that and you'll get to see how that's working with the 200 to 600 and do i recommend it and so on so anyway that's all i had for today thanks for watching make it a great day and get out there and enjoy nature bye bye